Are you ready to close more sales, uh, get more clients, and make people want what you've got? Then you're in the right place. Today, I want to talk about the three things to convert more clients. Now, first of all, the word convert sounds a little cold, right? So a lot of you might be like, I don't want to convert. That sounds yucky. Okay, well, enroll them. You want them to raise their hand. You want them to lean in. You want them... Ultimately, we just want them to buy our product, program, or service, right? And if you're doing it in a one-on-one -on -one sales conversation, this is for you. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you want to build trust. No one's going to buy from you if they don't trust you, right? If they don't trust that you can provide the goods, if they don't trust that your system is going to show them how, or if they don't trust that you have enough experience or have enough confidence, you do have to have some confidence pretty good amount of confidence in order to really close a lot more clients into your business. Uh, even if it's on video like this or in a one-on-one -on -one sales conversation, but building trust could be showing that you care by asking lots of personal questions or deep questions like, you know, <clears throat> how's everything going in your personal life? I know your business, like I work with entrepreneurs, right? I know your business is important to grow and you want to get more clients, but are you happy? Is everything good? Like, is everything good at home? Because that can affect your, your um, sales, your ability to market yourself, et cetera, uh, and your confidence to go out and get in front of more people. <clears throat> so I ask some of those types of questions sometimes because, well, number one, I'm generally genuinely interested, but number two, it also helps them see that I'm out for looking out for their best interests. I don't just want to sell somebody into a program because I want to make sure it's the right thing. And I want to make sure that it's a good fit, but it's also going to solve the majority of their ideal problems. So make sure people, uh, really get to know, like, and trust you in that beginning part of the conversation. The second thing is you have to build want. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to build want. They have to want what you've got. So you need to dive into the problems they're having, the challenges they're facing, the struggles, the things they've tried and didn't work, the, the people they've hired that didn't work out, perhaps. You have to sometimes get into the muck of that stuff and get deep with that because if you don't talk about it and you just talk about what you have to offer, you don't know why they're saying no later. It could be that someone burned them or they got ripped off or they didn't feel like they got value out of something they've invested in before. You have to get into the muck of what they want, what their challenges are, what their problems are, and what they've uh, been involved with in the past in order to try to solve those problems. Because most people you're talking to have tried something. It's rare that we find somebody fresh off the boat that needs a little bit of, needs what we've got, and they haven't talked to anybody else ever before. <laughs> That's rare. It happens. That'd be great. I'd love to get people uh, in a conversation when they're ready to start a new business and they find me first because most people uh, <laughs> wish they did, wish they found me first. Okay, so build trust and then build want and then you have to build urgency. So why do they need to buy today? Why do they need to get started today? Why you, right? You wanna make sure you have maybe a script for this part because there's certain questions you wanna ask them and there's certain thing, leading things that you want to say in that conversation. Um, you wanna make sure that you're giving them bonuses or special offers that matter to them, not just the, something you thought of three months ago, but really in that, questioning and that conversation you're having, find out what matters to them. For example, sometimes I talk to a new entrepreneur and they don't have a website yet. Well, I have lots of web de designer um, vendors and people that I use and can refer. And I even help people with what to say on their website and the strategy behind it all. If I know that someone needs a new website and they need coaching with me, I might throw in a new website as a free bonus if they sign up today for the coaching. And you might think, well, that's a lot of money. Well, not necessarily if I think of how much I'm paying my vendor. Um, it's a little bit, but I'm priced right in order to, um, you know, eat that I would say eat that cost. So you have to know the cost of the client and you have to know all your pricing for all that kind of stuff. 
You don't have to do that. Every once in a while, I'll so I'll run across somebody who's maybe not that techie, right? Who doesn't understand all the technology and how to hook up their autoresponders or their you know opt-in boxes to their website and things like that. Then I might give them two or three hours of techie time with one of my VAs instead. And so I know the cost of that and I can, that's a sense of urgency. That's a bonus that I can throw in. It doesn't cost me a lot of money, um, but it's exactly what that client needs. And a lot of times those bonuses will um, have them sign up sooner than later. Okay. So think of what matters most to them. And what could be the urgent thing that you throw in? Now, sometimes you don't have to throw anything in, and that's fine too. Um, but other things you can do in the sense of urgency to build urgency is, you know, if you're not going to do this, what are you going to do? If you're not going to work with me, who are you going to work with, right? If not now, when are you going to do this, right? So those are some of the three questions that sometimes I suggest people ask in that closing Um time of the conversation. So uh, make sure after all of that, after you build trust, you build want and you build urgency, you actually enroll the person and you take the credit card. Make sure you say, okay, well, let's get you started. Uh, would you like to make one payment or three, right? Would you like to um, put the our first call on the calendar? Would I want to send you the delivery on the whatever. Um, so make sure let's sign you up so I can send that off to you, right? So you have to actually have the wording that works for you that tells them, okay, we're signing you up now. I need your credit card, right? And then you can take that hopefully over the phone. That's what I would suggest. Please try to refrain from, okay, I'll send you the link to sign up and then just hands off it. That's what sometimes people do when they aren't comfortable with the sales process is they'll say, I'll just email you the link. And then, you know, 70% of the time, those people don't actually buy because now it's not urgent anymore. And there's just a link and, or the link and the email gets caught in spam or trash and they don't ever actually get that email. So it's important to take the credit card while you can. Now <clears throat> an added, um, one of the objections you're gonna get is, oh, I'm not ready right now, or I can't possibly buy today, or I have to talk to my husband first, or whatever, or I have to sleep on it, or I have to you know, pray on it. Whatever the delay is, right? Delay uh, objection. Then you say, okay, great. Well, let's schedule a follow-up call where we can get you started. And is that gonna be in two days or do you need four days to do that, right? Let's. Let's plot in a follow-up call. Or if it's a larger business that you're potentially talking to, it could be that they need a proposal of some sort. I don't usually do proposals in my line of work, but some people have to do proposals. You don't always have to do a proposal, mind you, okay? So sometimes you can get away from doing the proposal. If Even though you come from corporate, sometimes that's ingrained in your brain that you have to have a proposal. You don't always have to. <clears throat> You don't necessarily want to email a proposal either. You want to schedule a follow-up call to go over the proposal because you want to be in conversation with someone when you're trying to actively close the sale. So those are just some really quick tips on how to improve your sales conversations uh, so that you can get more clients, make more money, uh, and be more confident in what you're doing in that conversation. Um, I have so much more for you. If you're interested, please come and make sure you're getting on my email newsletter list. Go to jumpstartyourbiznow.com uh, and forward slash newsletter or forward slash free trainings and get a bunch of other free trainings. That's fine. Go and, you know, sometimes people sign up for three or four trainings over there. That's fine. I want you to have this information. I want to empower you to make more money and build your business faster. I want you to be more successful. I want you to get more clients who love you and refer you and adore you and are loyal to you. I want you to get more confident around the marketing and sales, because that is the lifeblood of your business. I'm Katrina Sawa, and I hope this has been helpful.